Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I realize that I have not been able to share my beauty empties or speed reviews on skincare in quite a while, and I have a lot of products to review. I always say that my empties are the best review I can give because you get to experience a product throughout its entire lifetime, from the moment you purchase or receive it to the moment you throw it away. And I think it's really important for us to contend with our waste and to be very realistic about the products we actually do use up and I do really really try to focus on using products up so I'm going to give you speed reviews I thought this time I would focus on products I haven't reviewed on my channel before because I do have a lot of repeat products I may shout them out but I'm sure you know by now the things that I love and there are a lot of new things here I don't think I've done an empty since my year-end roundup in January or December whenever I posted it so if you're new here I always keep track of of my the quantity of empties I use up and the value of the products that I use up and I just keep them like in a note on my phone because I think it's helpful to see what kinds of products I actually use reuse repurchase all of that. Some of these products I've purchased myself and some of them I've received in PR. In 2023 so far basically from January through the end of April I've used up $3,669 worth of product, and that includes 79 items. I know that's a lot, but I feel like Sean's been using more skincare, like he's been using a more full skincare routine with serums and retinols and all of that, which I'll share with you. So this is actually like our household empties of beauty products and body products and all of that. I know it's a lot, it's not average, I don't think, but again, this is what I do for work, so it's helpful for me to know those things. So let's get into the speed reviews, starting with skincare. By the way, if you're curious, I have this bucket of empties and I also have this bucket of empties and there are also empties that I threw away already. So it's a lot of stuff. I'm going to generally try to group in order of application. You guys know I like to do that. So the Biro Tea Time English Breakfast Tea, I think this made it into my monthly favorites before. This is a beautiful essence. I forgot to say it's a treatment essence and it was by phase so there's liquid on the bottom and like creamy ingredients on top you shake it together it was super hydrating i could use multiple skins of this and it contains tea essence so it had this really nice fragrant smell from the ingredients no added fragrance i think but it was really beautiful would totally use it again but i'm not repurchasing quite yet i did feel like it really plumped up the skin sean used up the colleen rothschild rothschild matcha tea treatment toner and i did try this as well it was really fluid and hydrating and it includes green tea it was calming the only complaint he had was about the packaging and it was that the um coating and the paint of the logo started flaking off after a while i don't know if it was like the repetitive exposure to wet hands and like water because it's specifically like where you grab the bottle and eventually it got so bad that he was like, I feel like I'm applying um, like the label, like the paint from the label. And I think it was kind of a turnoff towards the end of the bottle, but he liked the formula itself. So I think um, if they could improve the packaging, that would be great because the juice was good. I've talked about this a bunch. I love, love the Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum, another bi-phase serum that's more like an essence, a very fluid, watery product. It was great for hydrating and plumping up the skin, and it's also a beautiful makeup primer. I would totally repurchase this again. I honestly miss having it in my in my routine. The Ceramidin Liquid Toner, this is one of Sean's favorites as well. It's like a really bouncy, kind of richer toner. They've actually reformulated it to have even more ceramides now. And it was already great, but it's even better than it was before. I think we're gonna get into some serums now. So let me start with something very expensive and this was gifted to me. I did not purchase this. I don't know if I would purchase it myself. This is the Augustine Spader, the serum. And this is the refill, so the actual container is almost like a vase, and then this goes inside of it. It's very bougie, and um, 
I really liked it. I don't think it's a necessity. I don't think any luxury skincare is a necessity. It's more about like the skin entertainment and the luxurious experience. And I did feel like my skin was really calm, really plump and really even toned as I was using this, but I can't say that this alone is going to change your skin. I mean, very few products on their own are going to transform your skin. I like to be very realistic in my reviews, but I did really enjoy it. And if I saw it on sale at a really good price, I would repurchase it. I am not someone who would probably repurchase it with my own money at full price because I like to be a bargain shopper. But if it's not a stretch for you and you are curious about it, I think you'll enjoy it. It doesn't have any actives or anything like that. It's just hydrating and soothing and they do have their proprietary peptides in here, which do plump up the skin and, and soften signs of aging and stuff like that. But yeah, that's all I have to say. It's nice. Is it something you absolutely need? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Then I've got the Chlor Symmetry Fluid. This was a really, really beautiful hydrating serum that is packed full of antioxidants. If you can't tolerate vitamin C, this is a really great way to get antioxidant protection into your routine without causing any of that potential irritation. And this will help with anti-aging. It works really well in tandem with sunscreen. This is something I would use in the morning right after cleansing in lieu of vitamin C. And this actually had a bit of body to it. It was kind of like a creamy serum. So I found it very hydrating and it was a really, really nice product. Just a couple of days ago, I finished the Paula's Choice Calm Repairing Serum with ceramides and beta-glucan, and this was absolutely beautiful. So this was like a gel serum. It had a bit of slip and body to it, and it was super hydrating, and this whole line is about calming the skin, taking down signs of redness, supporting the skin barrier, hence the ceramides, and I did feel like it was a great product to pair on with actives, for example, if I wanted to support my skin barrier. It was great to use with retinoids, and I did feel like it soothed my skin. I do have redness prone and reactive skin, and I did feel like when I used it, it kind of brought that, that angry skin down. So if you're like me, you have reactive skin, sensitive skin, dermatitis, eczema, I think this is a really great kind of all-rounder serum. There's also no fragrance, so it avoids any of the potential triggers for sensitive skin. So here's another item that Sean used up and I kind of feel like I need to like create a section in these videos for Sean's skincare. So this is the Gold Fat and MD Radiance Repair Daily Renewal Serum. I was actually really surprised at how rich this is. So this is a serum that's very emollient. So it included a lot of plant oils and it had this rich quality to it. Honestly, I think for my skin type, I could have even used it as like a moisturizer because it has that, that emollient touch. So I think this is really nice for drier skin or it could be your only moisturizer if you're more oily. Um, it's a really nice step in a PM routine if you want to lock in that moisture and hydration. And he really, really liked it. He actually flew through this. I don't think he knows how much this costs. Um, it is a pricey product, but it's also a really like, lovely experience. So I especially think dry skins will like this. I used up uh, the Tower 28 SOS um, Intensive Rescue Serum. So if you're familiar with their SOS spray, that is something I use all the time and that is hypochlorous acid that helps calm the skin, especially if you have eczema prone skin or dermatitis prone skin, rosacea prone skin. This is like the serum version of that line and it's kind of this clear gel. And I liked it, but I actually liked the mist a lot more. So I found that this was, it, it comes out and it's kind of this like jelly sort of gel. It's a fun texture and then it immediately becomes very uh, like watery and it sinks into the skin really quickly. So this isn't going to be something that's about like deep hydration. It's more about um, delivering that hypochlorous acid to your skin. So it depends like texturally what your preference is. I just think I liked the mist more because I could use it at any point during the day or in my routine and I can just mist it on hands-free. So maybe I liked it because I'm lazy. But um, yeah, it's still a, a great product. I just prefer the mist delivery. All right, next I used up 
quite a few products from Saatchi Skin. I love Saatchi Skin. I think I have a 15% discount code with them. They are a small brand uh, founded by my friend Farah and in the UK and all of their products are stunning. Like the formulas are very complex. They are multi-ingredient formulas. So you're not gonna have to use a million steps. The price point is a little bit higher, but they're really beautifully crafted and you, you can sort of tackle multiple skin concerns with any one of these products. But they do all target like specific skin issues. So let's just go in order. I have the Trifala Pigmentation Corrector, one of my favorites, and this includes kojic acid, I think. It also has peptides and it helps fade any PIH, discoloration, pigmentation, sunspots. It is it, is, it really works. <laughs> it really, really works, especially for me. I get cystic spots along my jawline and they always leave pigmentation. I actually have one here right now. I don't know if you can see, but I find that when I'm using this, it fades pigmentation really quickly. Their most recent release was last year and this is the Pro Resilience Serum. And this actually might be one of my favorites from the line, even though it's not an active product. It contains antioxidants, peptides, bioflavonoid, and hydration. And it's a really deeply hydrating serum. It's a clear hyaluronic acid feeling serum, but it's so much more than that. And I feel like it actually gives me like plumped up skin throughout the day and throughout the night. It doesn't just plump up and then like dissipate by the end of the day. I feel like I actually get long-term hydration. Then we have the Complexion Clarifying Accelerator. And if you have active breakouts, I think this is a really great option. It contains dioic and mandelic acid, organic neem, centella asiatica, and manuka honey. So it contains these calming ingredients as well as the acid. So it's not going to wreck your skin barrier the way that some, you know, acne treatments can do. I found that it really did help me deal with breakouts without also irritating my skin, which can happen. And the last one is their retinol. This is their ursolic acid and retinol overnight reform. This is so beautiful. So it contains, um, I don't know what the percentage of retinol is in here, but even though it's a retinol, which is a step stronger than retinol, um, I didn't find any tingling or irritation. I've heard many people say the same. So it gives you all of the benefits of retinol without the irritation. It's beautifully formulated and I would totally use this again. It also contains bakuchiol, gl glutathione, organic black cumin, and holy basil. All of these are also based on or include traditional Ayurvedic ingredients as well as the more like sciency actives that we think of when we think of like Western skincare. So to me, it's like a beautiful hybrid of both worlds and I think Farah does it so well and these products really, really deliver. All right, a product I loved but I went through so quickly was the BioEffect EGF Eye Serum. I mentioned this in my favorites earlier this year. I have heard such amazing things about this and I did find that it really visibly addressed um, fine lines around the eyes and puffiness and I did feel like my eyes looked more like firm and just tighter <laughs> as I was using this and that's what everyone says and it actually did live up to the hype for me however it's very expensive I think it's like 90 something dollars I do have a skin store code for 25% off that you can use for it I haven't repurchased it since um, just because I have other eye products that I'm working through, but I would, especially if I used my own coupon code, um, because it does get you a significant discount, but I don't think it's something you need to use like twice a day. I know Vanessa from Goals to Get Glowing, I'll link her below. She's talked about how she used it every day for like the first couple weeks. And then I think she's scaled back since and uses it a couple of times a week for maintenance. And this does contain like proprietary peptides that help firm up that eye area without retinols or any of the traditional anti-aging ingredients. So if that is a major concern for you, I, I would check it out. I do think it's worth it. Um, it does come with the price tag though. I used up another Dew Deliverance Serum. You guys know I love this. By the way, my code for Dew Skin has changed. It's um, now Becca 10, I think. I'll link it below. It's not Becca 20 anymore. 
sad. But occasionally they do sales, so I'll share that with you next time I see one. Let's get into moisturizers, lotions, oils, all of that stuff. Um, Sean used up the Paula's Choice 1% Retinol. I reviewed this in my Sephora skincare recommendations video. It's um, a stronger retinol, but it is really, really moisturizing and comfortable and hydrating. He had no signs of irritation with this, and I think Paula's Choice does retinols really, really well. I used up a uh, Make Skin Succulent, uh, or no, Make Beauty Succulent Skin Gel Cream. Um, I've reviewed this in my Make Beauty like overviews before. It's a beautiful hydrating gel cream that doesn't just evaporate off your face. It actually gives you long-term hydration without any heaviness. So if you have oily combo skin or you're looking for something lighter, especially going into these warmer months, this is a beautiful option. I love the packaging. Comes with the pump and a tube and you're actually able to get like so much product out, which I really appreciate. And I do have a discount code for them. It's Becca15. I've got a couple of repeat products that we love, have re reused many, many times and repurchased many times, Pharmacy Honey Halo and Dew Skin Instant Angel, two great ceramide-rich moisturizers. Another favorite that I'm very sad is gone, I have talked about it before, it's the Youth to the People Polypeptide Future Cream. This is emollient but not heavy. It's kind of buttery and it melts down to this really, really comforting, soothing texture. Very underrated from Youth to the People, in my opinion. Sean used up the Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm. I also really love this. Um, obviously, they have their gel gel moisturizer, the Aqua Balm. I like that too, but I kind of like the moisturizing balm better. He said uh, between this and the Pharmacy Honey Halo, he liked the Honey Halo because he likes the richness of it. So this is not quite as buttery as that. It's a little bit lighter. So I think it's just a textural preference. I was actually surprised he said he liked the richer texture better. The Fresh Floral Recovery Calming Mask. This took me forever to get through, even though it's not even that big, it's 3.3 ounces. Um, it was really, really lovely. It did have like a light floral scent, but it was moisturizing without being too heavy or too emollient. So I think it's actually a really nice uh, night cream if you don't like something too occlusive or too thick on the skin. This was a funny product. Okay, this is the Audacite Green Smoothie Cucumber Plus Apple Quenching Creme. So this is a gel cream moisturizer. It comes with like this kind of pump and it legitimately smells like a green juice. Not like in an artificial way, it actually smells like if you walk into a green juice bar, you get that like celery kind of note and the cucumber and the apple, it smells green. It's the most LA kind of product that you can imagine. I did feel like the scent was a little bit strong, like it did linger for a while after I used it, but it is really nice and hydrating. It is like a burst of water for the skin, so it's not long lasting hydration, but it does give you lightweight hydration. And I think if you have oily skin, you'll really like this. Oily to normal. Dry skins will probably need something richer and maybe wouldn't reach for a gel cream anyway, but it was a nice option and I mean it did entertain me. Skin entertainment again. I used up two micellar waters, my go-to the Bioderma one and then Odacite sent over their Blue Aura cleansing water. This was really nice. Um, I didn't love it for my eye makeup. I felt like it it didn't exactly sting but it wasn't the most comfortable but it got off the rest of my makeup really well. Um, and I, but I do use micellar water to get off eye makeup specifically before I use a cleansing balm. So I kind of always go back to the Bioderma just by habit. And I also feel like micellar water is one of those functional products where I don't need something necessarily luxurious, even though this was a nice experience and it, it was really beautiful. Like the color is blue. You can see there's like a tiny bit left. But yeah, I kind of just go back to my Bioderma all the time. This is the Medicaid Advanced Night Ceramide Signature Night Cream. This was really, really nice and it was really rich and hydrating. It contains ceramides, so it's really, really good for supporting the skin barrier. And of course, Medicaid makes amazing retinols. Um, or retinoids in general. So this is a great support product if you're using any of their retinoids or any other retinoids. The only thing I didn't love was that I found the scent to be a little bit intense. It has like a, it's a high-end scent, but it's like a floral scent that I would, I could have done without personally. 
Um, I just don't really need that in a moisturizer necessarily, or they could just like take it down a notch. I would love that even more. And then I used up a Mara Universal Face Oil. I rarely go through face oils because I use them very, very sparingly for my skin type, but especially in the winter time or when my skin barrier just needs some extra love. I do really like this one because it's not too, too heavy and I'm able to mix it into moisturizers or tap it over the skin. And I don't feel like it's just a mask over my face. I actually feel like it sinks into the skin and does help calm my skin. So I am a big fan of this one. I swear I've gone through more SPFs, but the only one I have here, maybe I threw them out. The only one I have here is from Suntique. I got this last year in Seoul and it's called the I'm Vegan Sun Serum SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. I'm not gonna talk about it too long because it's not available in the US, although some of their other SPFs are, and I think they're really, really nice. This was beautiful, hydrating, lightweight, sheer, no white cast, all of the good stuff. If it ever becomes available in the Western market, I definitely will link it. Or if you're in Asia, you should definitely pick it up because it was a beautiful product, but sadly not available here. That is it for skincare. Let me get into some makeup, lip products, all of that. So I went through a night mask, or a lip mask, I should say. This is the Belief Aqua Balm Overnight Lip Mask. And lip masks in general just take forever to go through because you don't need a lot. And I feel like this is very generously sized. It's 0.7 ounces, 20 grams. So it took me a long time to get through it. And I honestly loved it. I think it's a nice, rich mask. It's um, comparable to the Laneige sleeping mask, although I have gone back to that one. If you feel like mixing it up, this is a nice option for that. And it does have this really nice like fresh citrusy scent to it. It's not too strong. It does fade. And I felt like it actually did moisturize my lips overnight. So it's one of the few lip masks that actually stands up to the Laneige for me. Then I used up an Emile Corden lip balm. Um, they sent a couple of these over to me. Mine was in the scent Lisa, and they sent over a couple others as well. And this was really lovely. I felt like it was hydrating. It's kind of on the thinner side, so it's not quite a lip mask, but it melts down, it's very emollient, and I use this during the day. Um, however, it's very expensive. <laughs> It's $60, I think, and um, it's 0.42 ounces. It did last me a long time, but I don't know if I would pay for it myself at that price point. If you are curious to try it, you have the money to spare. I think you won't be disappointed. There are a lot of different scents. Um, there's one, this one, I, I don't know what it is. It's very reminiscent of like the 90s to me, like a classic lip balm scent, but I can't put my finger on it. They also sent me like a coconutty one, a caramely one. The scents are really, really nice. Um, so yeah, I can't say I didn't enjoy it, but it was it is, it is a pricier product. Then I emptied another Tower 28 clear lip jelly. This is called Chill. It's the one that's just, it's just clear. Um, I actually really find these very hydrating and I find that they plump up the lips and they don't leave weird residue behind. I actually use these as like a liquid lip balm, which I can't say for a lot of lip gloss formulas. So I've actually emptied this like three or four times. And then um, I, oh my God, this is so old. <laughs> This is a Bite Lip Balm, Agave Lip Butter Balm. Um, I must have had this for a couple of years now because Bite no longer exists in their old form. So that's that. <laughs> this concealer went bad before I could finish it. This is the Rose Ink Concealer. I've heard a lot of people say it's gone off quickly even though they like it and I agree. I found it really creamy, really moisturizing around the eyes. Um, I have the shade LXO60, and this was a bit light for me, so I would probably go up one or even two shades if I were to repurchase it again, but at the rate that it went off, I don't think I will. If you do like a creamier, like almost like an eye cream texture sort of concealer, you might like this and, and you might consider trying it. If it were my only concealer, I probably could use it up before it went bad but it's not, I have many concealers. So for that reason, it's a pass for me, but I did enjoy it while I had it. The um, Velour Pretty Big Deal Peptide and Tubing Mascara. If you like tubing mascaras, but you are looking for volume and you feel like tubing mascaras maybe don't give you that oomph that you want, try this because it's very good at building like a big lash with control, but I don't feel like 
that's easy to find with tubing formulas. A lot of times tubing formulas are more lengthening than volumizing and this does both. So I think this is an underrated formula in my opinion. And then I have brow products, my Milani brow pen and my Benefit brow gel, which I use all the time. Let's get into some body products. So Grown Alchemist had sent over their body cleanser and this took me forever to go through because obviously it's huge. It's almost 17 ounces, 500 milliliters. This was really beautiful. It feels high end. The scent was so fresh. It really woke me up. I loved using this um, for a morning shower. It's kind of citrusy, but a little bit floral, not too floral, not like powdery, like a green floral. And I really liked it. So did Sean. I would definitely repurchase it again, honestly. And I think it's really good value because the size is, is so big. One of my favorite body sunscreens is the Paula's Choice Extra Care Non-Greasy Sunscreen. This is Broad Spectrum SPF 50 for face and body and it's water resistant. So this is one of my favorites for summer because I can use it pretty generously. Um, this is five ounces and it uses all chemical filters. So there's no white cast and I like that it's water resistant, but it's also not goopy, it's not sticky, it doesn't leave residue, it doesn't get all over my clothes. Um, I would even use this on the face, honestly. It's a really, really elegantly formulated sunscreen, especially for summer. Another body wash I loved was the Frish, Fresh, Fresh, Fresh Milk Body Cleanser. What, what's happening? This smelled so nice. That's the thing that I remember about it. It has this like milky floral quality to it and it was a very moisturizing body cleanser so it it has that creaminess and it leaves a hydrated feeling behind it was also nice for like shaving and there's also a lotion in this line that smells really nice too a body lotion that comes in this packaging so this was sent to me i would repurchase it i would also purchase the set maybe with the lotion for a loved one as a hostess gift, you know, that sort of thing, because it is one of those indulgent things that I think is nice to gift to someone. I have a few body moisturizers, the La Roche-Posay Lipicar, I've gone through many of these, I always have one on hand pretty much. The Soft Services Speed Soak Skin Rehydrating Gel, I'm so sad this is empty. This is um, for people who don't like traditional body moisturizers. It's like a gel cream for your body. So it sinks in really quickly. If you like the Necessaire body serum, it's kind of like that. And I found that it did hydrate my skin. It's not going to be as moisturizing as a traditional lotion, but I think there are people who don't like traditional lotions who still don't want ashy arms and legs, and this might be really nice for you. If you are looking for something richer from Soft Services, I also really love their Caria Cream, and I've emptied that before. I would probably repurchase that over this one, but that's just because I like the moisture. One thing that I have mixed feelings about is the Kopari body butter. So this is really rich and I love the scent. This one is Tahitian vanilla, I think. It smells so good. It's like a floral vanilla, so it's not too gourmandy or desserty, but it just takes t more time to rub in than I would like. And my favorite body butter is the Josie Marin body butter because it's not quite as thick. It sinks in quickly while still giving you a richer buttery experience. So I did use this one up and I, I would use it again, but more on nights where I have time for it to sink in before I get dressed or I'm going for more of like an indulgent body care experience. That's when I would go for this. And then lastly, I went through the Herbivore um, Coconut Milk Body Polish. I think the Herbivore body products are their best products. I have mixed feelings about their skincare, but I really, really love their coconut scent, especially. This is not super abrasive. It's kind of a finer body scrub, so it's not too intense or too harsh, and a little bit goes a long way, so I really enjoyed that. I've got a couple of things for hair, and Saltair, uh, a few months ago, maybe six months ago, came out with hair products, and this is my favorite line from them. I've tried two different lines. This is the um, Recover and Restore Damage Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. This was such a beautiful duo. I felt like my hair was really soft when I used it, really shiny, really touchable. It didn't feel brittle at all. I really really liked this duo, and I think these are maybe 12 bucks each. They're really generously sized. These are, it doesn't say on the thing. 
they're big. <laughs> and these are refillable too. Um, I don't know if the refills are available on their website yet, but if not yet, then they will be. Um, I'm currently using their moisture line, which comes in a tan, tan color. Um, actually, it's this color. One of those pumps uh, didn't work, so I had to switch out one of these with the other pump, which is fine. But I don't like that line as much. This is the one where I noticed like an actual right, like a change right away, which you don't always get with hair products. So I actually miss this duo and I totally would repurchase it again. My Christophe Roban um, scalp scrub, the cleansing purifying salt scrub. This is great for when you need a deep, deep clean. And then I went through some old faithful dry shampoos, the Chlorine dry shampoo, which I really love. Amika Perk Up, which I also love. It's not quite as cleansing, but I liked the size and I traveled with it for a few different tri trips actually, um, because it was a slim package. So I think that's it. I know there were some repeats, like things you've seen me talk about before, but there were a lot of new products that I've tried and tested and I wanted to be able to review for you. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about any of the products, let me know, or questions about like my empties tracking process. It's really just a list on my phone, but I do get questions about it. And I know a lot of you have started tracking your empties too. And it's always really fascinating to me when I do my end of year breakdown, I actually like go by category and I break down like how many moisturizers I used, how many serums, how many shampoos, how many conditioners. And I do think it's really helpful and insightful to know what our own consumption practices look like, where we wanna spend money versus where we don't, the amount of packaging we produce, all of that I think is an important part of being a thoughtful beauty lover <laughs> and enthusiast, and also contending with the reality of our own waste on this planet. So that's it for me. If you did find this helpful, I would love for you to subscribe. I do this kind of content beauty stuff, makeup stuff, skincare stuff, um, and some fashion stuff too. So I'd love for you to come back and hang out again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.